Coming up on today's show, Tesla gets set to deliver the first Model Ys to customers in just two weeks' time, Rematz gets its C2 on the track and showcases its new Active Aero prototype, and one VTOL e-taxi company uses its electric aircraft to help in the fight against the coronavirus. These stories and more coming next. Welcome back to another quick blast through this week's news in the world of cleaner, greener, safer and smarter transportation. Due to family commitments, I'm actually recording this show a little earlier than usual. So if there's been a breaking news story on Friday, I'll do my best to cover it in next week's show. Stop right there. Future me here. Just with a little note to say that the Geneva Motor Show has literally just been cancelled. And I mentioned in today's video, Geneva Motor Show debuts. Those debuts are no longer going to take place at the Geneva Motor Show. Instead, they're going to take place in private at independent events organized by each automaker. So bear that in mind as you watch today's show. Back to past me. Thanks to the Electric Auto Association for their sponsorship of today's show. Find out how you can accelerate the electrification of transportation today by heading to electricauto.org. After months of sightings in the wild and plenty of hints from Tesla that it was well ahead of schedule, Tesla has officially began planning delivery dates for the Model Y electric SUV. Following Tesla's standard practice, those who ordered a higher spec performance Model Y will get their cars first, with five-seat performance Model Ys now being scheduled for delivery in the US as early as March 15th. This has led us and others to speculate we'll see Model Ys officially first having a customer ceremony, likely to a Tesla investor or board member, on March 14th. That's one year to the day that Tesla first unveiled Model Y. And of course, it's also Pi Day, something that we know Elon Musk probably can't resist. Following its successful crowdfunding round earlier this year, Sono Motors has officially announced a solar partnership with solar specialist Valo, with Valo producing the photovoltaic panels that will be embedded into the bodywork of Sono Motors' first car, the Sono Scion. At the same time, Sono detailed an interim measure for customers who've ordered the Sono Scion, the option to lease a Renault Zoe until their Scion is delivered. While it's not entirely unprecedented, it's something certainly that's rather unusual in the automotive world, and it's a clever way of keeping customers engaged and with transport until their Sono Scion is ready to be picked up. Continuing its ramp up towards its official unveiling in New York in April, Lucid Motors has officially announced its chosen LG Chem as the battery supplier of choice for its upcoming Lucid Air. Of course, LG Chem already supplies electric car battery packs to a number of different automakers, but rather than choose the pouch-based cell that most electric car customers are picking, Lucid opted for LG Chem's cylindrical cells which of course are similar to the cells used in Teslas. Lucid said that it picked these cells because of their efficiency gains over the pouch-based variants, but given that a significant number of former Tesla alum work at Lucid, including of course its CTO and CEO Peter Rawlinson, I'm not surprised that Lucid picked the battery cells it did. In an official interview with Electric this week, Kia confirmed that it's putting US sales of electric cars on the back burner in order to ensure it meets sales and emission targets in Europe and Canada. A lack of batteries is also being partly blamed. The result? For now, Kia will continue to sell the Nero EV in the states it must do in order to meet zero emission requirements, focusing the majority of its production output on Europe instead, where it's struggling to meet customer demand. While a wider choice of EVs are promised eventually for the US, the closest you'll get to having anything other than a Nero EV in the US right now would be to drive to Canada and buy a 2020 Soul EV, which is being sold in order to satisfy Canadian regulations. And for other countries, well, you're just going to have to wait a lot longer. Over the past 10 years, we've seen photovoltaic solar cell technology improve at an astonishing rate, especially when it comes to cell durability, power density and cost. But now a team of scientists in Russia say they think they can double the efficiency of today's solar cells by using gallium phosphide, a polycrystalline compound semiconductor 
alongside nitrogen atoms to produce A3B5 semiconductors within the cell. Initial tests have shown a single photoactive layer, that's the thing that turns sunlight into electricity, has a solar efficiency of 2%. But the researchers from St. Petersburg say they believe they can produce a cell with multiple layers designed to capture a much wider spectrum of light, which will, of course, further increase energy output. When it comes to electric hypercars, the Remats C2 should certainly come to mind. It's blisteringly fast and it has a massive price tag to match. But the Croatian EV does leave others in its wake. And this week we were treated to a new video from Remats in which the company took two prototypes out on the racetrack to test new features of the upcoming fully sold out 1.5 megawatt car. One of the prototypes focused on handling and suspension, but the second showcased Remats's new active aero system. Highly sophisticated, the new active aero system keeps the car glued to the tracks in a very impressive way. Production C2s are expected to debut next week at the Geneva Motor Show. Volkswagen may be well underway with production of its ID3 ahead of initial deliveries next quarter. But it turns out that Volkswagen engineers are stumped about how to best go about a software fix that all ID3s need to have before they can be delivered to customers. That's because a glitch in the initial software for the first 10,000 ID3s has essentially made them unsellable. And now reports from Manager Magazine in Germany suggest that thousands of engineers from across the Volkswagen Group are all working together to identify bugs and fix software problems before the promised launch date. The cause of this all? Well, according to inside sources, the car was developed just too quickly for engineers to do a good job. Considering the Dieselgate debacle was originally claimed to have been caused by a just-fix-it move after similar pressure from on high, I can believe it. As it prepares to expand production of its Kona EV outside of South Korea with a new Kona EV production line in the Czech Republic, Hyundai has announced a sizable increase in range of its first long-range EV. Unlike the previous model year Kona EVs, the new 2020 Kona EV, at least the ones made in the Czech Republic, will have a WLTP range of 484 kilometers per charge, up from the 449 kilometers of previous model year cars. That's a sizable improvement for increase in range without an increase in battery capacity. And this suggests that some tweaks are being made for this year to yield that 8% range improvement. Sadly, it's not clear if other markets will benefit from that increased range. As you may or may not know, the current version of the Renault Twingo was developed in collaboration with Mercedes-Benz, resulting in a shared platform between the Twingo and the Smart for 4 ED. To date, the Twingo has only been available as an internal combustion engine model, but now Renault has announced the Renault Twingo ZE, complete with a 22 kilowatt hour battery pack. That might not seem like much, and we don't yet have official pricing, but remember, the Twingo is a tiny city car that's designed not for long distance travel, but for inner city European travel, and that could give customers a lower priced alternative to the Zoe EV. We'll bring you full specs and pricing as and when we have them, but the physical space taken up by this battery shows how far battery technology has come in the last 10 years. And now, it's time for short shorts. GM's autonomous vehicle arm Cruise has been given permission to test robo-taxis in the state of California. Under the permit, the independent subsidiary must have a safety driver present in the car at all times and there must be no monetary compensation from passengers for riding in the vehicle. Chinese vehicle startup NIO has officially inked a $1.4 billion rescue deal with a local Chinese provincial government. NIO has been cash strapped for some time and the deal will help it continue production of the EC6 SUV, an EV that it's literally just started making. Tesla is reaching out to Model Y Performance customers who ordered a seven-seat Model Y Performance to ask them to consider choosing a five-seat model instead. The seven-seat variant isn't due to go into production until next year, and Tesla says customers can have a five-seat version next month. 
Mercedes-Benz is edging closer to revealing the production version of its EQA electric crossover. It's released photographs of production validation EQAs undergoing final winter testing. The EQA will be Mercedes-Benz's second all-electric SUV. Production of internal combustion engine cars at the Detroit Hamtramck facility has officially stopped, with a plant shuttering down for 18 months in order to become a dedicated electric vehicle production facility. It will be home to the production of the Hummer pickup alongside the Cruise Origin autonomous electric vehicle. Tesla and Panasonic have officially scrapped their partnership to produce solar cells together at Tesla's Giga New York. If you've been paying attention, this is no surprise, although for now the two companies say they will continue to work together on battery cells at Giga Nevada. The NTSB held a board meeting midweek on the deadly Model X crash that occurred in Mountain View, California in 2018. It laid blame at the feet of Tesla, regulators, Caltrans, Apple and the driver himself, who was apparently playing a game on his phone at the time of the accident. Energica says it's already beaten its 2019 motorcycle sales records in just the first two months of this year, following an explosion of interest in its range of high-performance motorcycles. A more capable lineup with a much better range is most likely the cause for this spike. The Draco GTE has continued to create a lot of buzz this week, with former Lamborghini test driver Valentino Balboni taking the sports car out on the track and giving it a really good thrashing. He was very impressed and, as you can see, he had a lot of fun to boot. Ahead of the Geneva Motor Show debut, BMW has teased a rather enigmatic animation on Instagram of the silhouette of the upcoming 2021 i4 electric sedan. It's one of three electric cars BMW will bring to market by 2022. Also ahead of Geneva, Polestar has revealed a new concept electric model in the form of the Polestar Precept. While some people are complaining that the Polestar Precept looks too much like the Model S, which frankly I don't see, it does remind me a little of the Porsche Mission E concept. DS, the premium brand owned by Citroën Peugeot, is showcasing the flight of fancy that is the DS Aero Sport Lounge concept in Geneva. It's a powerful all-electric concept with all of the usual high-tech interiors that you'd expect and absolutely zero chance of becoming a production vehicle. Envision and Electrify America have announced a joint partnership to deploy off-grid capable solar-powered charging stations at rural locations throughout California. 30 EV Arc 2020 stations will be deployed, each capable of charging two cars at six kilowatts each. Ride sharing might appear to be the cleaner, greener option than car ownership, but a new report from the Union of Concerned Scientists shows that ride sharing actually increases overall vehicle emissions. Only taking a shared ride will have the same emissions as just taking your regular car. Citroen has unveiled a new electric vehicle that it will be debuting in Geneva. But rather than be a full-size electric car, it's a small, low-speed electric quadricycle called the AMI that you can drive sans permis, which is an obscure vehicle classification originally designed to give rural citizens in France affordable transportation. Rivian has confirmed that it's lobbying the state of Colorado for the same rights as Tesla when it comes to direct-to-customer sales, arguing that it does not believe traditional dealerships will be able to sell the R1T and R1S effectively. Rivian is looking to set up its own stores to direct sell to customers, just like Tesla. Alongside the i4, BMW has been pushing more details of its climate testing for the upcoming iNext this week. While it's good to see BMW share footage of such testing, I'm going to admit, like so many other automakers, I'm tired of seeing testing from BMW. I want the final thing. Canadian company Electromechanica, that's the firm behind the single-seat commuter vehicle known as the Solo EV, has announced that it's now actively looking for a US assembly and engineering facility where it will make said vehicle. It hopes to start commercial production in the US this year. And those are your short shorts. There will be more next week. As the world comes to terms with the fact that the coronavirus, or COVID-19, is quickly heading towards pandemic status, there's a big focus on getting medical supplies, staff 
and sometimes even patients transported without risking any further infection to the populace. And Ehang, a Chinese firm developing the Ehang vertical takeoff and landing air taxis, has stepped up to help its country and the world fight this nasty virus. It's completed a test flight of its Ehang 216 AAV, that's autonomous air vehicle, and says it's ready to be used as an emergency air transport for supplies, staff, and when required, patients. Because it can operate fully autonomously, it says patients can be transported while lowering infection risks, which of course is a very important thing if you're trying to slow the rate of infection down. And finally, the humble potato is a staple in many countries around the world. From the quick and easy baked potato to its use in casseroles, used in roast dinners, and of course the classic fish and chips, it's loved and adored by many, especially our friend, Gavin Kiwi Evie Shoebridge. And now there's a reason to love your spuds even more, as it turns out that potato starch, when combined with derivatives of corn oil, could improve the capacity and longevity of lithium ion batteries. You see, researchers in Korea have discovered that these two commonly found ingredients, or derivatives from them, are essential in producing a carbon silicon composite anode which does not swell during charge or discharge cycles resulting in a longer life battery with a much higher energy density. Who knew? Potatoes, not just a quick meal. And on that spudtastic note, it's the end of this week's show. But before I go, I'd like to thank the Electric Auto Association for sponsoring today's News Roundup show. They've been advocating for electric vehicles since 1967, and they firmly believe that our future depends on us making the switch to clean, green electric cars today. You can find out how you can join yourself, become a local EV educator, find local monthly meetups to attend, or just find EV owners to talk about the making the switch from an internal combustion engine to electric by going to electricauto.org. If you'd like to help us make more videos like this, please do like, comment and subscribe. You can send us a couple of dollars our way every month through Patreon, buy some swag from our swag store, and if you fancy it, tip us a coffee with Kofi. I'll be back soon with another great show, but until then, thanks for joining me, and don't forget to be better, kinder, and smarter with one another. Keep evolving!